The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation with Heart Grant is brought to you by Alive, Bond for Bones, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, ESC Distributors Limited, Grand Bahama News, the IAAF, World Relays Bahamas, and Wendy's. Foundation. The Foundation. Foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, The Foundation. It is a glorious Monday morning. Well, as glorious it is, it's going to get for the day, I suppose, because today is April 8th and a lot of persons have been talking about this solar eclipse that's going to be happening. They're talking about the fact that now that you're going to see and hear and feel some different feelings during this time as the... Um, um, you know, as we're looking up to the, the solar eclipse, I got a message indicating that I should come and get my kids in the event that you don't want the kids looking up. This is bananas. What is going on? What is going I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that tomorrow we can look back at these things and laugh. If not, I'm hoping that you prayed up and stayed up to see exactly what's going on today. I stay alert of what's happening in the country right now. I stay alert of what's happening from a global standpoint, understanding that uh, if you have this kind of a sensitivity, there is a shift about. There is a shift afoot. And uh, you want to be a part of that. You want to be ahead of that. Not necessarily a breast. <laughs> you got to stay ahead of the thing and understanding your responsibility, being able to know uh, where we are. I'm grateful to be in your company today, guys. Uh, make sure you pick up the Guardian newspaper, all the information's in there. Showdown, showdown. Grand Bahama Port Authority rejects the government's $357 million claim. It's information that Davis says that collecting the $357 million owed by the Port Authority is the right thing to do. There's some things here. It says, don't stare directly at the eclipse today. Officials warn us. And then uh, when you pick up the newspaper, the Chinese repairing stadium at no cost to the government. This is bananas. People give you a gift, and then they got to come fix the gift for you. This is too We're going to talk about this in due time and due season. Ma McCartney wants to see the uh, see Minis return as prime minister. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, but before we dive into anything i gotta be as decent as possible and shout out my good decent people over at afs insurance agents and brokers they got everything laid out for you located number 407 blue hill road south check them out if you are in the market for a um if you're in the market for your insurance and you want to be able to get that thing taken care of, uh, if you get your taxis your jitneys uh your sds any of those particular things they do in House financing for your insurance. You can get that taken care of. You don't have to be one of these persons that now you get your plates, you then convince your MP, you did all these particular things. Now you don't know how you're going to insure the thing. Let's be as decent as possible. Go down there and check out my good people over at AFS Insurance Agents and Brokers. They are located number 407 Blue Hill Road South. They can take very, very, very good care of you or the in house finance. And they're also open on Saturdays. Also, I got to shout out my good, decent people over at Da Vinci's. Da Vinci's Innovators, Printing Innovators, they got everything laid out for you. They are located uh, right over there on Burnett Road and uh, Soldier Road and Village Road. Right there at the plaza right there, they got everything laid out for you. If you're in the market for graphics, if you're in the market for printing, if you're in the market for any of those things and you need a hard copy or whatever you need, go down to Da Vinci. They can take good care of you. They are good and decent people. It is a modern store. All the information's in there. You can be able to access Access that please reach out to them they're on facebook da vinci printers and inter innovators innovators and printers they got everything laid out please 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 check them out they're good and decent people well like i said uh we are in in uh the studio smell good today i just want to be as decent as possible as i said that <laughs> i mean and i am excited to have this kind of a conversation i didn't know i was even prepared to have to stop it stop it 
I could see you calling. We didn't even start yet. You, you need to calm down. Right. We didn't even start yet. We're going to get into this, right? So I'm going to open up the lines at 1 o'clock hour, but I want to get some things out. Uh, in the studio with me today is a very good friend, is uh, one of my older friends who've identified some things even in me and gave me the opportunity even for you to know me at this particular point from a national perspective to have a good conversation about politics, but not necessarily just talking about it, but participating in uh, sort of the democratic growth and forward movement for this generation. I'm always, uh, you know, looking out for him. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm extremely critical on him because I miss him. He's my guy. He's my guy. He don't know this, but he's my guy, right? I expect to be able to see him move towards politics. To him, you know, wink, wink. You think it's time for you to get back in there? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to my very, very good friend, none other than Branville McCartney. My brother, good afternoon. What's happened with you? Good afternoon, Howard. It's good to be here. I'm happy love, that you... Listen, let me just say, you know, uh, I, I listen quite often to your show. I know. And I... You called me and cussed me a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> Go ahead. But, you know, I, I think you're doing an excellent job. I want to congratulate you on it. And, uh, I appreciate you. I man. want to encourage you to keep moving forward. I appreciate keep you. Keep doing man. what you're doing. I appreciate and you. good afternoon to the Bahamian people out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with none other than Branville McCart. We're going to open up the uh, lines um, uh, at the 1 o'clock hour, like I said. I want to get a couple things out. We haven't seen... Uh, well, I've seen Branville. The last time I've seen you uh, was not necessarily on the highest, you know, upbeat occasion. Uh, we sat there. I think we saw, was that the last time when we saw at Chris Chris's funeral. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, we embraced. Uh, mm. It was it was very it was a somber time for us to be able to recognize those things. But uh, I'm grateful that you're here with us today. Now, things. Mm. I won't start like this. My telephone it's it's go two ways, but <laughs> more often than not, the things has come into me right? right. And as a result of these particular things coming in Saturday. I had an opportunity to be able to, so I had to make a couple, right? is that Branville McCartney for sure? Seeing you in Long Island with former Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Alexander Minnis, being able to do a book tour. Now he was here talking to us about the power of determination. Mm -hmm. We did something special for him in these particular instances, even beyond this point, and he's still pushing this book. Now talk to me about, because I read the article, guys, the information's in the paper. I, I read the article and found out information that this was a request uh, you know, they extended an opportunity for you to be able to come and, you know, join them. Talk to me about how that happened, how this conversation even um, uh, came up. Well, this is not the first book signing I went to for Dr. Minnis, The Power of Determination. And let me just say off the bat, it's a really good book, easy read. I read it within a day. I read it. And uh, I have encouraged my, my children uh, to read it. Uh, but when he first la launched a book, I think in November of last year, if I'm not mistaken, I was there uh, as well. I was invited, like a number of other people. And uh, on Saturday, I attended with Dr. Minnis and a few other folks uh, to his book signing in Long Island. Um, he called me up, asked me, he called me up a few days before, asked me if I would attend, and um, I oblige. It's really good to see you um, um, taking a step out. Like I said, we haven't seen you uh, from an official standpoint, from a national standpoint, since you stepped back from your position as leader of the uh, Democratic National Alliance, uh, I think it was seven years ago? Seven years ago. Seven years ago. And, uh, and being able to step back, we've always sort of wait with bated breath. You and several other persons in the country who have uh, decided to kind of step back from politics, there has this, there's been this sort of an anticipation, uh, this hope, this expectation that you and the others, like I uh, indicated, would step back to the forefront and contribute with uh, this purpose, this thing that's actually inside of you. So I, I say that to say, I believe that uh, this speculation as a result of being able to see you, uh, like you indicated, you've been to a book signing before. This is no different than what you've done before. But 
the political environment is significantly charged now. So speculations are mm -hmm. out of the door. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about uh, what came to you and sort of questions. I, I've read a few of the questions here in the Guardian newspaper. But what are the social questions persons want to know? Uh, Branville, you're getting back into politics? Branville, you, what you're getting? <laughs> and so forth and so on. Uh, sometimes politics, the, the political conversation is not necessarily highbrow. But it's the desire to be able to see what can we anticipate as we move forward to the next general election. <laughs> you know, I think as a result of that trip on Saturday, persons ask, you know, whether or not I'm into politics, or coming back to politics and the like. And there were questions asked about uh, what are you doing there with Dr. Minnis uh, and, the, and things like that. And uh, one of the questions that kept on coming was, um, are you back in frontline politics? Well, no, I'm not back in frontline politics. Um, whether I was part of the F and M, no, I'm not part of the F and M. Um, whether I'm supporting Minnis, Dr. Minnis, for leadership of the country, and my answer to that was yes. That's a very straightforward answer. Yeah, right? the answer to that is yes. But I mean, there's no two ways about that, no, right off the no, top. No. For him to be able to move towards leadership nationally, mm. he has to go through leadership locally yeah. within the confines of his political organization. Right. Now, every time we've asked Dr. Minnis mm. whether or not uh, he's interested in being able to move towards leadership, again, within the free national movement, he said, Howard, that position is not vacant. Yeah, yeah. Every time I ask him, I've asked him about 12 times, right? He said, Howard, the position is not available. <laughs> yeah. There's no need to have a conversation about something that's not available. And mm -hmm. in due time and due season, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this. Uh, it says to me, as I'm listening to you, that you support him in the event that he decides to be able to put his hand forward uh, for the convention and leadership of the free national movement. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's that's if he decides to take that route, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if he's thinking that way or otherwise. Uh, but if he does, um, that will be the first step in moving to become the prime minister. And I, I would support that move. Um, I think Dr. Minnis, um, in terms of his administration, during COVID and those two hurricanes, um, did what was necessary in the circumstances um, to deal with... In retrospect the, or during the midst no, of this? During the midst of it. You knew that this was a good move? Listen, who know what kind of move it would have been having a pandemic? There's no playbook for that. There's yeah. no written book for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, he, was, he was unfortunately given a bad time to come and govern mm -hmm. those two hurricanes mm -hmm. and then the pandemic. No prime minister, mm -hmm. none. Mm -hmm. I think the last pandemic we had was over 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. no, pan, no prime minister ever had to deal with that. He dealt with it. Priority was to save lives. I hear people in this country talking, well, he lock us down. He lock us down. How silly, how, how silly, you, he locked us down. The, the world was locked down, yeah. Howard. Yeah. The world was locked down. And you could turn around and say he locked us down. Well, that was something that was necessary. That was something to save lives. I didn't want to be locked down. No. I didn't want my businesses to close, but it had to happen, right? You had, you had airlines. Locked down. You had countries locked down where you couldn't even travel. You lock us down. How stupid. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry for people saying that. You know, <clears throat> it shows, it shows our, <sighs> Jesus, I, 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 I can't say it right now. <laughs> I Let's be decent. Let's be decent. I, <laughs> I'll be decent. But it shows, <laughs> you know, the mindset of those persons to say that. You know, <laughs> 
the reality is if what the Dr. Minister during that time, if he didn't do, many more people probably would have been dead. Talking about getting locked down, getting locked down, may not have been here if they weren't locked down. So they really need to yeah. push that in the, in the basket, man, and look at it. We had a pandemic, correct? Right. We had a pandemic that was unusual, out of the ordinary. Nobody even knew what COVID was. Mm -hmm. They had to develop a drug to deal with it. Nobody knew what it was. But the government at the time dealt with it to the best of their ability. And of course, that took away from them being able to carry out their agenda. Mm -hmm. In comparison no. to what we see nationally, um, internationally, right? Uh, whether we look at Rome, whether we look at Cuba, whether we look at uh, Canada, United States of America, how do you believe that we fared under Minister's leadership during COVID-19? Perhaps the best in the, one of the best in the world. And I think that's documented. One of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the Tell sentiments me. on me. ground... Yeah, what like I, you said. But what I tell you about the sentiments yeah, yeah, yeah. on the ground and the these people talking about your foolishness <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> they, that, the, the sentiments on the ground. Really? People were indifferent with that. Really? People were indifferent with I that. Mean, and so, I think that that was not necessarily the crux of the PLP's campaign to be able to find themselves victorious. But I believe that it didn't do uh, the minister administration well with the PLP bringing that, uh, whether casually or for, uh, uh, you know, straightforward, to the forefront during the political campaign. Now, you know, as we look back at it, as we look back at it, I think uh, the intellectuals amongst us, despite the fact that they would have lost something, despite the fact that finances would have been hit in one way or another from an economic standpoint, I believe that they share at least 85% of the sentiments that you say. Yeah, but you know, you say the intellectuals, fine, but let's, let's be real, let's be real. During the pandemic, not one civil servant lost their jobs. No. People did not go hungry. Mm. Like other places in the world, the even great United States of America, people went hungry in the pandemic. Yeah. Like Homelessness the, spiked. That's right. Yeah. That didn't happen over here. Mm -hmm. Right? The, the, the businesses... Uh, the, the, uh, the, with the government discussing things with the financial institutions, uh, we, were, we were able to, um, some businesses were able to get grants uh, with, the, with mortgages and what have you, and having discussed with the banks, the banks gave a uh, person's time or suspended payments of mortgages and, and the like. But not one person one civil servant lost a job. Okay. Right? Now, watch me. We've seen in you, from your Ingram administration, a leader, mm -hmm. hungry, desirous, like a young lion being able to kind of prance out and uh, prepare yourself for this time. We've always, as a result of that uh, sort of back and forth, either it was you or Hans Barbach. It was going hard. You always go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember that? <laughs> you always, you know, I remember oh, that. Man. You always going hard. You always go hard. Mr. Ingram sent me on a mission, man. <laughs> yes, so you want me to go? You sent me on a mission to send a man up again. You, you always go hard. You always go hard, right? And, and, and as a result of that, we saw uh, you know, a, a budding leader in you. So we've always not necessarily seen you in the shadow of another leader, but always wanted to be able to come to the forefront. Now, in your capacity, not joining the FNM, uh, only being able to identify Minis in his particular capacity, saying that you'd like to see him return as leader, I'd like to know from you, in retrospect, you were critical during uh, his administration in 2017, more specifically. You found yourself aligned with uh, Loretta Turner Butler, being able to, Butler Turner, taking on this kind of a position and being able to be uh, one of the Senate uh, in the Senate for her, um, and being able to represent independently. You indicated that. It was an independent senator, Absolutely. and being able to do it. I, 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 I went there. You said independently. D DNA. We thought it was good. I was like, I, I went there. I went, and in my speech, when, 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 when I went to the Senate, I was there as the DNA leader at the time, 
and leader of the opposition in the Senate at yes. the time. Yes. Right? And look, politically, that would have, or I thought, would have given the political party, the DNA at the time, more of a voice. Because remember now, at that time, I was not in the House of Assembly. I was not in Senate. Um, I did not have a seat. And that, that was an opportunity to, to, to hopefully uh, get the, the voice out there more um, and well, you contested with the same sentiments that people talk about minutes. You contested with the same sentiments that exist on the ground and how people, uh, in the spirit of your execution and what you desire to be able to pull from this, to wean from this and deliver to the Bahamian people, people perceive this in a different light entirely. They look at this and they say, well, Jesus, Banville going back to the FNM. Well, my God, Banville and, and Loretta join up, so forth and so on. These are the sentiments on the ground. And you had to contend with that also. Mm -hmm. You still stood. Yeah. That's heavy. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about how the challenges, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs of politics has, um, uh, you know, what is that? Has that weakened your desire to be able to contribute from a national standpoint or has it fortified you to know that, okay, there is conviction, there is strength, I must push forward? Listen, um, you know, and I was asked this question, I think by Gandia Dames yesterday. Uh, and the foundation of what I do, whether uh, it's politics, business, or otherwise, I want to see, because this country has so much to offer, I want to see what is best for this country. And of course, by extension, the Bahamian people, each and every one of them, and those who have a right to be here, right? And that what keeps me going, whether I'm in or out of politics, no, you know, wanting to see what is best. When you look at the political landscape today, and I'm asked a certain question, I will make a determination for myself as to who or what I think would be best to move this country forward. Despite their politics. Despite the politics. Despite the politics. I right? Like okay. And hence, when the question was asked uh, of me, of Dr. Minnis, my answer was, I believe, looking at the landscape... It's a straightforward answer. Yes. Politicians well, don't do this, by the way. You know that. Well, listen, You've been listening long I, I, enough. I've never been a regular <laughs> politician. That's around the answer to thing. I've never been a... And you could ask me any question. If I know the answer, I give it to you. If I don't, I say, boy, I don't know the answer. But you'll get a straight answer from me. It is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here talking with none other than Branwell McCartney being able to have good conversation straightforward, straight down the bow, talking about national leadership. When we get back, we're going to talk about al uh, uh, alliances or allegiances and talk about this concept and idea revival. He talked about these things, but I want to get dive deeper into it. I want to take this quick commercial break, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back after this. Foundation. The Foundation. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your gal. Come witness history in the making at the 2024 World Athletic Relays Chase the Sun, Paradise to Paris, happening here in Nassau, Bahamas. Hundreds of the best runners from more than 40 countries will compete for their place in the 2024 Paris Olympics, May 4th and 5th at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets early at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office. Start your day off with a mouth-watering deal available only at Wendy's. Introducing our new weekday breakfast deal that gives you a choice between three delicious items for just three dollars. You heard right. Monday through Thursday mornings, you get a choice between our bakery bliss croissant, breakfast baconator, or a three-piece pancake meal. Each only three dollars. Stop by your nearest Wendy's today. Better mornings always start at Wendy's. Bonneville Bones 
since established in 19... The leader in men's fashion in the Bahamas. We're conveniently located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza and fully stocked with everything you need for all occasions. Our Harbor Bay location is one door north of Alive with the black and white signage of Bonneville Boutique. Both locations are open from 10 to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Bonneville Bones and Bonneville Boutique, still the leader in men's fashion. Located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza. Foundation. Found foundation. The foundation. The foundation. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company right here on the foundation, being able to chop this thing down. It's a beautiful Monday afternoon, and I'm grateful to be here uh, today. We're having a, uh, you know, it's it's really refreshing for me, right? Uh, I'm grateful to kind of sit in this kind of a position. I know a lot of persons are very inquisitive. They want to know more information, especially when they see certain faces uh, pop to the forefront. I was on Saturday. We had this kind of a conversation. Now you didn't know because you know things has happened in this country. You all know, Brandwell, don't worry with that boy. Eh? So I said, you do. <laughs> you know, go, do you know how these people go? So you got to go last yeah, minute, yeah, yeah. put everything out. So I was grateful to be able to have Brandwell McCartney in the studio with us today, being able to talk. We're talking everything to do with. Uh, the state of affairs of the country, but talking about politics and more specifically, right off the cusp, we've seen you, uh, like we said on Saturday, being able to join Minis on his book tour, uh, The Power of Determination. I want to know about this, whether or not his power of determination could lead to the type of leader that we need for this, this dispensation. We've read the book. I was extremely entertained by the book. Uh, one of the aspects of the book that stood out to me is that he went for his um, um, wedding reception. And That's I right. said, Jesus God, where is my God? <laughs> so where is my God, right? So, yeah. so even reading the book to realize that the tribulation that he gone, that he's went through, uh, in the book, he actually identifies himself as, I believe, as an oak tree. I've never identified him that, as that. Uh, from a cultural standpoint, I've always seen him as a coconut tree. With the tribulation that he's gone through time after time again, he stood strong. Like that coconut tree after the hurricane. And I said, oh my God, this, this fella. I believe that was one of the reasons why a great deal of people gave him an opportunity. Yeah. Now, since that opportunity, a lot of persons were indifferent with his posture, his procedure, his uh, his sort of a tone, this kind of a curt, sharp thing. And uh, people kept, uh, from the media standpoint, trying to figure out what this was. Was this as a result of his, uh, his training, his posture? What was it? And now we're seeing him open up. Now we're seeing him talk about, you know, we went through these particular trials. Now he's talking about these particular things. In the event that Minis uh, finds himself as leader, of not only of the free national movement, uh, this, this is only hypothetical. Michael Pinto, don't fight me. My God, be having a conversation. Let's just talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the event that he finds himself in the position of uh, potentially moving towards leadership of the free national movement and eventually uh, finding himself as prime minister of the country, is there an expectation? Do you believe? believe as a result of you being able to say that you'd like to see him there again do you believe that we can be able to get minister 2.0 a better version of him as prime minister based on the experiences that he's had the tribulations that he's gone through an understanding and having a greater heart for the bahamian people talk to me about this i think so i mean you know just going through that term in office that no other prime minister has gone through you would be frustrated yourself for many things, right? And uh, of course, everything is a learning experience. And I have no doubt that um, Dr. Menes would have learned from any short fallings that may have occurred. Uh, but every prime minister... We had the same every, expectation. Every every, every, pri every prime minister had their shortfalls, right? We had the yeah. same expectation, I'm telling you now, for Prime Minister Perry Christie. Yeah, everyone had their... Everyone... Look, no one is perfect. I feel like second was worse than the first. No. <laughs> well... If we assess but, it, his yeah. entire... For, for me, former Prime Minister Perry Christie uh, put all his proverbial political eggs in one basket... 
which was Bahama. Now, we see the success that exists at this particular time. But knowing that there was a responsibility for being able to push forward, I felt like this was legacy, 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 being pushed at the forefront as opposed to being able to understand, um, uh, you know, balance, national perspective, growth, development, and looking at everything. How can we be sure that Minis won't be the same guy? Or maybe worse, talk to me about it. Well, I believe, having gone through what he went through as prime minister, having reflected on those circumstances and his governance during that time, and if he decides mm -hmm. to move if. forward, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, this, this we all speculating here. Mm -hmm. But if he decides to move forward, I'm sure he would have taken into consideration and the ugly, right? And would have learned from his mistakes, like we all ought to do. Yes, like we all ought to do. Um, if you see that Dr. Menace decides to challenge for the leadership of the FNM again, I have no doubt he would have taken all of that into consideration. And then he would have made that decision to challenge. If he doesn't challenge for it, then he probably feels that, look, you know, I've done what I had to do. I've done my best. And let me... Uh, let me support from the back seat. Um, let's stay right here in the realm of hypothetical, just for two seconds. Because of your unwavering, very straightforward support for Dr. Menace and his particular position, hypothetically, um, the one thing that leaders find that they need, that is crucial for leadership, beyond the fact that you serve at the pleasure of the prime minister, is a team that can be able to shoot straight with you. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been this, so much so that you were rejected, and you stepped back. Is there a stronger word for rejection? Yeah. <laughs> I had but six. I had but six when I said it with him. <laughs> right, right. From the free national movement during uh, Ingram's time, right? Yeah. During Ingram's time, we can remember back in the House of Assembly, it was, it, listen to me, it was so sharp. I'm watching this from Grand Mahama. I remember the former prime minister standing in the House of Assembly saying, if I don't get it, you will get it. <laughs> and he laughed. Yeah. And I looked at this and I said yeah, to yeah, myself, yeah. well, this is crazy, right? We know that you represent that proverbial thorn and leadership side at that time. Yeah. But we know that that thorn could be able to be a significant support. Now, in the realm of hypothetical, <laughs> you're traveling with me right now. We had hypothetical. In the realm of hypothetical, in the event that Minis decides to be able to move towards this position, he's successful in being um, head of the Free National Movement and prime minister of the country. Uh, will you find yourself aligning not necessarily, again, with the Free Nahashita movement far and wide, but being able to support Minis and uh, becoming that, that political and social conscience that I believe that he may need. No, 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 let me fix that. I know that he will need as it relates to being able to move forward in the next dispensation, 2026 and beyond. Are you willing to support him in those particular steps? He is not in that position now. And I'm supporting him. If he's in that position, most definitely I'll support him. I love this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is a good conversation. I can let you get in at this particular point. Give me a call. 323-6232, 325-4316, Anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. Right here on, um, uh, we're here. Ramad, I want to know this. Uh, you, you have really been viewed. And uh, let me be as decent as possible when I say this. Both you and Loretta Butler, uh, Loretta Turner Butler, Butler Turner, I keep doing that, Loretta Butler Turner, um, have been viewed as the next dispensation of fair, strong, 
leaders to take the country forward. I think we've had many conversations about what our expectations are and uh, sort of disappointed that we didn't see the full weight of your capability um, in your leadership capacity or Loretta's leadership capacity. We were looking forward to seeing that kind of a fusion, as many of us, uh, uh, not necessarily political advocates and, and finding our, our fanfare for political, but from a nationalistic perspective, looking at you and saying, wow, you guys really could make a, be a, a dream team. Do you think that there is any hope to see a dream team of sorts to take this country where it needs to go uh, 2026 and, and well beyond? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I think um, for that dream team to be realized, um, persons need to put aside certain feelings and have the ultimate, like ultimate feeling for the betterment of the country. Right? Um, but I most definitely think what you say, a dream team is possible. And if it's done properly, it will be possible. The Free National Movement has um, at the helm at this point, right now at this juncture, a uh, very vocal articulate, strong, youthful, um, insightful, and uh, well-connected person as it relates to technology, and the person of Michael Pintard. Um, when we look at his SWOT analysis, his strength, his weaknesses, his opportunities, and his threats, uh, it seems as though he gets extremely riled up and very emotional as it relates to nationalistic standpoint, what needs to happen. Is there any view well, as I, I hear that you support uh, Minis in his particular capacity, is there any view of a concept uh, that you see Michael Pintard being able to to head that up and move in that direction also? Head up. Head yeah. up the free national movement yeah. and move towards the same objective for the country as the prime minister of the country. I think Minis would do a better job. But of course... Uh, Pintad's contribution would also be very invaluable. Essentially, you're saying to me that he could be a part of this. Uh, of course. I like this. Of Ladies course. and gentlemen, we have a good conversation today because, Bramville, I see, I didn't know that you was ready to have these kind of a... Uh, I've spoken to you many times. <laughs> how much time I call you? I say, Bramville, you ready? <laughs> yeah. Bramville, how much time I call you? I say, Bramville, you ready? All right. And to come today and you're not hitting me with the political malarkey, you're not hitting me with the let's skirt around the bushes, you're very straightforward with these particular things, you have made up your mind of what you believe can take us to the next, uh, to the next level as a country. Uh, how do you see the state of affairs under the PLP at this particular time? You had to pay your electricity bill recently? Sir, let's not even talk about that. Did Here's you go to the food store recently? And I got four children, I got a few. <laughs> State of affairs is ridiculous. It's very disappointing, unfortunately, when the PLP got to power. Like I think most right-minded thinking Bahamians, they won the government, and you really wanted the government to do well. If they do well, the country does well. The country does well. The Bahamian people, those who have a right to be it, they do well. Well, it seem to be a disappointment. Um, I'll give you an analogy. Mm -hmm. When Dr. Minnis was Prime Minister, we had something called COVID mm -hmm. that was unknown mm -hmm. to everybody, a pandemic, in addition to two hurricanes prior, right? One of the most devastating hurricanes in our history, right? That had to have been dealt with. And, for all accounts, I thought it was dealt with in a manner that had to have been dealt with. Today, we have a different type of pandemic. It's a crime pandemic. Ooh. Now, crime has been around for many years. 
is nothing new, mm -hmm. right? Is nothing new. But look how the government of the day is dealing with crime, with that pandemic, or not dealing with it. Can you imagine if the PLP were in government during the COVID pandemic, what a disaster this country will be? They have a pandemic today that is known and is known about. For Christ's sake, man, the prime minister is a criminal lawyer. What about the national security? The national security minister is a criminal lawyer, right? You got one or two other members in the PLP who are criminal lawyers. That's their business. Crime has been around. And these guys just pussyfooting around with the crime element in this country. That pandemic they're messing around with. They can't handle it. They can't deal with it. Can you imagine if they had a pandemic that was something that was completely unknown to them, toppled with two hurricanes, one being one of the most devastating hurricanes in our, our lifetime? Mm -hmm. Dorian. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if they were in government what a mess we would be in? Just like the mess we're in now today in terms of the crime. They came to power when, the PLP, when things were relatively smooth, quite smooth, comparatively to when Dr. Minnis came to power. Mm -hmm. And look how jacked up our country is, economically, socially, from crime point of view, educationally, health-wise. You tell me, mm -hmm. has there been any type of positive movement since the PLP came in? in relation to the well-being of the Bahamian people. The well-being. The answer is no, man. It's plain and simple. No. This government, the PLP, came to power, and they started talking. No electricity bill. No electricity bill. Man, electricity bill has been the highest in the history of the Bahamas under the PLP. And they could put more tax on you than you can shake a stick at, directly and indirectly. The cost of living mm -hmm. is outrageous in this country. Doing business in this country is a nightmare. Nothing working. Nothing working. Right? You tell me. You compare the two. I want to know this. I know that um, our Prime Minister, Philip Davis, has taken on this kind of position both uh, locally in terms of education to be able to make persons aware of it, but more significantly internationally <laughs> as he continues to be able to push forward for climate change uh, and the awareness and rectification for that. Can it be said, presumed, assumed uh, by anyone locally that this effort is to assist with what the massive, uh, you know, tribulation that was visited upon our shore from Dorian. Do you believe that this effort that he's running forward with, with uh, uh, climate change and going all over to ensure that we can be able to be represented in these spaces is going to do us some benefit uh, locally? I would, I believe in climate change. Mm -hmm. Climate change came around, not from the Bahamas, but from other countries around the world, really, because of what they were doing. The most that we could do in the Bahamas is talk about it and ask those other countries to get on and stop doing what they're doing to cause climate change. We can't do nothing. It's all about your talk. What should be happening is the prime minister should be concentrating on what's going on now in this country. Mm -hmm. The cost of living, crime, immigration, and the like. Flying around every other day, the good Lord send. 
ain't gonna change climate change. You understand? That ain't gonna change it. You're flying around, you're talking, but it ain't gonna bear no, no fruit in terms of the Bahamas and the Bahamian people. What you're saying is good, but I could tell you, we can't do nothing about it. We can't do nothing about it. It's up to our big brother to the north and all those other countries to make a decision. This is what we're gonna do. And then that's when we'll have any positive effect from it. Flying around, talking about it, and the like, it's not going to have any effect on us right now. Let's oh. deal with the stuff that's going on in this country today yeah. and dealing with everyday lives in this country. That's what needs to happen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here talking with none other than Branwell McCartney putting everything on the table today. I want you to join me in conversation. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere for the family violence, 242-300. 5720, hit me up 422 4796. I gotta take this commercial break. We're gonna get to news, uh, take a break, get to news, and be right back with a dive deeper into conversation. Hopefully, you join me after this. <laughs> forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your gal. Come witness history in the making at the 2024 World Athletic Relays Chase the Sun, Paradise to Paris. Happening here in Nassau, Bahamas. Hundreds of the best runners from more than 40 countries will compete for their place in the 2024 Paris Olympics, May 4th and 5th at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets early at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office. Start your day off with a mouth-watering deal. Available only at Wendy's. Introducing our new weekday breakfast deal that gives you a choice between three delicious items for just $3. You heard right. Monday through Thursday mornings, you get a choice between our bakery bliss croissant, breakfast baconator, or a three-piece pancake meal. Each only $3. Stop by your nearest Wendy's today. Better mornings. Always start at Wendy's. Bonneville Bones, established in 1970, is the leader in men's fashion in the Bahamas. We're conveniently located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza, and fully stocked with everything you need for all occasions. Our Harbor Bay location is one door north of Alive, with the black and white signage of Bonneville Boutique. Both locations are open from 10 to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Bonneville Bones and Bonneville Boutique Still the leader in men's fashion. Located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. <laughs> Foundation. 
And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, The Foundation. It is a beautiful, glorious Monday. The eclipse is live in full effect. I hope you guys are not looking up. Leonardo DiCaprio told you, don't look up. My God, you're wilding out. We're having a good conversation today. Um, uh, hopefully this eclipse everything else. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's doing that. We're having a conversation today with none other than Branville McCartney, former leader of the Democratic National Alliance, uh, former cabinet minister, former member of parliament for Bamboo Town, and now uh, just political sideline advocate, being able to identify what he says he believes will be the best offer, the best person to come to the forefront of the person of Dr. Hubert Alexander Minnis. Uh, Brian, I'm so happy to be able to have you here with us today, my brother. Um, uh, I, I see we get a lot of fanfare. There are people coming in. They will ask Brian questions, so forth and so on. Listen, uh, anytime you come to the forefront, from a, I told you this at the beginning of the conversation, when people see you, it is a quiet expectation, uh, very quietly, to see whether or not there is a shift happening from a political standpoint, from a national standpoint. Is there a shift happening? I believe that from 2011, uh, there was a quiet expectation that you be a part of the next shift that happens in this country. I dare say that shift has happened just yet. I dare say it happens just yet. I think a lot of persons uh, was anticipating that it would have been 2017 with the introduction of a non-lawyer uh, in the capacity of prime minister. But, you know, like, as I said, we, we, we had so many pushback, like you talked about, whether COVID-19, uh, what they call it, the twin pandemics. Mm -hmm. All these things has left some people wanting. Do you believe, save the possibility of any pandemic, that this could be the chance to be able to see that, that this, that this dispensation, that what people anticipated in terms of transparent leadership uh, that goes uh, the full hundred to be able to ensure that people access those things, that we lift uh, our, our rising tide, that lift all boats and ensure that there is productivity for the Bahamian people. The 80-20 falls on 80 for our side and 20 for others. Talk to me about that. I think... <laughs> I think at the end of the day, it's really the Bahamian people that directs the political directorate. If we allow politicians and governments to do and say and get away with things, they'll do it. I think we need to stand out a bit more. Don't be political in the sense that the, because the PLP is doing this, whether it's good or bad, I'm supporting them, or vice versa. But always try to do and speak up and stand out for what is right and beneficial for the country and the Bahamian people, eh? Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of any type of shift really don't depend on those in the political arena, but the mindset of the Bahamian people and what they want and what they expect a political directorate to, to do. You think the Bahamian people have a mind to change? Now. They've, I'm not just talking about a mind to change political organizations. I'm not just talking about a mind to change uh, leadership. I, I'm talking about a mind to change the course that we're on. I don't think that we're on, we're, it seems like we're on cruise control to self-destruction as a nation. Yeah. And I think that uh, leadership that stepped in the stead uh, that says that we know the way has not taken us to yeah. uh, the promised land. No, I, I don't know. I think Bahamian people, for the most part, are very passive in, in their approach to certain things. Uh, and like I said, they, they are too political. So... Um, what one party says, if it's their party, it's, it's gospel, uh, when in fact um, it's not. So, so the bottom line is, I think the Bahamian people, they really need to, need a wake-up call, man. Need a wake-up call. Wow. Because, because, you know, where we are today, 
um, we should not be. We should be way more advanced as a country. Um, we should not have all the suffering we have in, in this country. Uh, but because of the political rhetoric and the mindset of the Bahamian people, basically across the board, wow. that's where we are. Wow. And so I blame, I blame us, the Bahamian that's people. Heavy. You don't blame politics, you blame the Bahamian people. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, you know, if, if, the, if you're going to, if you're in politics and you're doing something wrong, let's take, for instance, man, let's take this crime situation today. Right? Uh, you would have, I would imagine, PLP supporters saying the government is doing all they can. Right? When in reality, that's not the case. But because of politics, right? They're saying they're doing all they can and things are good. Well, that's a bunch of bull, right? Things good and for they, them. Yeah. Well, but. The cronies. But I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about, I, I, and I'm using crime because I'm not talking say from an economic point of view and I'm not crime that affects everybody whether you PLP F and M or otherwise right and that issue they would say things good or, or the government doing everything again because of politics when in fact they should be saying hell no they're not doing everything they can there's so many other things that can be done to put this crime situation under control mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. with the fundamental principle of any governance is the protection of his people. Fundamental principle of any government is protection of people. And this government ain't doing it. No. Right? But you allow people on the PLP side saying they're doing it, man. They're doing what they can. Well, I've heard people say to me, well, Howard, crime was always with us. Yeah, crime has always been with us. I said that earlier. Crime has always been with us. And we got, and we got, we have a leader of the PLP who is a criminal lawyer, and the national Sh security minister who is a criminal lawyer. So don't you think, don't you think they should be in a position to deal with crime? Wow. Um, you know, implementing certain laws, carrying out certain laws. But look, I know this is controversial and all that stuff, right? But. The penalty of death for committing murder is still on our books, right? I can guarantee you, if you ask the prime minister if he believe in, in the death penalty, he'll say no, or he won't give an answer, or he'll skirt around it, or perhaps he'll just fly away, right? The bottom line is <laughs> these... These guys not going to do anything to curb this crime. Let me take a telephone call. Ladies and gentlemen, the lines are wide open. 323-622-3235-4316-325-4259. Anywhere for the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Howard Grant. Hey, what's up, Jeff? My good friend. <laughs> uh, everything is great, man. My, my, one of my... One of the, one of the, I mean, I find words right now. This is a man I highly admire. Brandon McCartney. Jeff, how are you, man? It's been a long time. Boy, it's always a pleasure when I hear you grease the airwaves. <laughs> um, you know, your statements thus far, I find very salient, poignant. It reminds me of the days, and I'm going to, I'm going to go straight to it. The days that you led the Democratic National Alliance mm -hmm. to the nasty and the openness that you have as it pertains to the, the status of the country at that particular time. Mm -hmm. We spoke as, as a unit, the Democratic National Alliance, about how we were going to fix this country. Uh, some of the ideas that the DNA had put forward were totally ignored and dismissed by even this current administration, uh, as well as, um, you know, but mostly this current administration and I'm one or two pundits, perhaps, in the FNM as well. But, Brian, I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to make any apologies for it. The season is ripe. Right now, this country is looking for leaders. 
who care about country first. Right now, that is, that it is not evident to many persons on the ground that this country is not being led in the right direction, sad to say. And, you know, the part that really peeves me and, and the most is that we all, as a people, suffer. Because when we have policies that's been implemented that is not in the best interest of the Bahamian people, or you have policy that you would like to implement, but you're not discussing it, and having an open forum with the Bahamian people at home is going to be impacted mm -hmm. significantly by the decisions mm -hmm. that's being made. Mm -hmm. That is very uh, concerning. And we look forward, Bran, to a, a, a group of persons who care about this country, mm -hmm who wants to get back into the fray of things, including yourself, Bran, you have a lot to offer to this country. Yep. You have a lot of persons out there, Bran, and I said it to you before. If it was for any way, state, or form that the Democratic National Alliance would announce itself to rebound itself, with you at the helm, I'm telling you now, the voices out there, you will be astounded. Hold on, Jeff, now, because before you go further, uh, <laughs> yeah. I got my lines lit up, but I got to ask you this straightforward <laughs> question. We were dealing with the realm, because in the space of decency, uh, Branville has already indicated that uh, he sees menace in the capacity, in the event that he finds himself leader of the free national movement and leader of the country, that that would be a good choice. So we're talking about leadership of uh, of that stead, right? I'm going to get to some questions about the revival or the position of the DNA right now and his thoughts about those particular things, but we're talking about this. In the space of hypothetical, in the event that Branwell McCartney decides to be able to join the free national movement, because this we'll be talking about all day, what happened? Have we seen Brand moving with him? In the space of hypothetical, will you support him? Um, as far as Branwell McCartney is concerned, the man that I know him to be, the man filled with passion, the man who cares about this country and, of course, our people, he has not showed me in any way, shape, or form that he does not care for any of the things that I've mentioned thus far. Brian is someone definitely I would lend my support to. Thank you, my brother. And I'm saying it quite clearly for everyone to hear. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate right. your telephone call. Let me get the next call. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. You on with me live? Next telephone call. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Yes. How you doing, uh, Brian? How you doing? Uh, uh, how is C. Allen Johnson? Hey, what's up? What's up, C. Allen? How are you? Yes. Yeah. I, Brian, welcome back to the Bahamas. I guess you must have <laughs> left since, 19, since 2017, because clearly you must have missed the four and a half years of Hubert Minnis governance. No, no, I was right here. Well, I was right you know. Here. Uh, you you were, I, you you were here as well, weren't you? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah, that's why I know what happens. Because yeah. what happens is, if I if I went back to my physiological psychology class in the university, I would have been judged the five years of minutes, the error, spell it how you want, the minutes error. I would have the classical case for what we call decision paralysis, analysis paralysis, choice paralysis, whatever it is, whatever definition you do it. <laughs> because the the minutes was provided, and this is where leadership comes in, and you want to use the word crisis, or under pressure, is when leadership exemplifies itself. The problem I saw is that I could go through this entire, you know, people say that Dorian was a crisis, it was an opportunity. Uh, COVID was the most ideal opportunity for resetting, restarting. But paralysis caused him to run to an early election. But uh, the decisions that was made or could have been made, let's use the first two years of his governance, a whole conversation about digital this, digital that, you know, $20 million, $30 million spent. And do you know we don't even have, we did, out of that $20 million, we didn't even get an internet cafe. The paper that was developed by the individual that we came into town with $10 million, blew that, blew it out. Then we hired him to keep him in business. And we got a, 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 a white paper from him that was graded at a seventh grade level for developing the technological Bahamas. Mm -hmm. We are now, uh, since COVID, and, and AI has proven this, you know, they says that most laws double every 24 months. Anyone in the technology field tell you that we are now in a static environment where technology moves and uh, less than a year. 
we used to say it used to move at the speed of light. It now moves at the speed of thought. And so what I look for, and I, I, I speak the language of, the, of tomorrow, so I know those who are capable and those who just talk it. See, I'm going to keep that, it tight for me. I got a million no, dollars to No, but I'm saying this. Mm-hmm. You said that Minis was not given the opportunity to govern. Minis has failed to tell us what he would have done and what he could have done while he was there, even right now. And so I say that at the easiest time of governance, if he was capable, he would have. Because if he could have and didn't, that's even worse. Wow. So, so I'm simply saying is that we are in the Bahamas being a crisis. We see what Minis gave us. You know what Minis gave us? Philip Brave Davis. Thank you, man. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I let you go. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate well, you. you. If All I right. just may comment very briefly, you know, uh, Sea Island is always good hearing from you. But, you know, it's always different to talk about a situation as opposed to when you're in the situation. We could all talk about the good, the bad, uh, from the sidelines. But when you're in there and you have to deal with certain concerns, that's a whole different ball game. And um, we tend to have a lot of persons in this country who sit on the sidelines and talk a good talk. But when it comes down to walking the walk, talk is out the window. This is heavy. Ladies and gentlemen, the lines are wide open. If you want to be able to chime in, please do so. Uh, telephone call on the line. Go ahead. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Next call. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hey, Alvin. Hey. What's up, Anton? What's going on, Alvin? All is well, my brother. What's happened with you? Everything going. Brandon, man. What's going on? I'm fine, man. How are you? I write you all and I see him making the papers these days. <laughs> well, not as much as you on the talk shows these days. <laughs> I try to follow your lead, man. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Look, yeah. I, I, hey, Alvin, you're, no. the, you, you're on the talk <laughs> show every day, <laughs> all day, and every show. <laughs> I try to catch my breath. Alvin, Alvin. Go ahead. I try to pick up what kind of reunion you're trying to follow. On the behemoth people, man. <laughs> <laughs> With your former leader. That's my former leader. <laughs> hey, former leader. Howard, Howard, hey. but you're always claiming, you're always claiming you are not enough for them. <clears throat> so you must, you must still be a DNA. Well, I never really sent him the official papers, you know. I never sent him the official papers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look here. Get, get into this conversation, right? A um, very interesting conversation. Let me, let me make a declaration before I say anything else, um, Howard and Granville, and get afternoon to the nation. Look, I understand the politics of what's taking place. I understand the maneuvering of what's happening um, um, nationwide, in particular in the opposition. And I'm not one who is interested in any way, shape, or form in getting in the mix of trying to point um, um, behemoths in one direction or the other, right? And so let me, let me, let me say that at the outset. But, Brian... Yes, sir. Man, look, you made some statements today. That <laughs> <laughs> look, yo, as it relates to education in the Bahamas, Brandon, underneath the former prime minister, tens of thousands, 60, 70, 80,000 Bahamian students was absent from school. He did a piss poor job of managing education in the pandemic. As it relates to the pandemic <laughs> itself. The pandemic? <laughs> as it relates to Please. the pandemic itself. Can you hear me, Brian? I can hear you. I get it. Sorry, sorry, I, I, sorry, I, I, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I can hear you. I, I, was just, uh, I was just laughing at what you said. Uh, in the pandemic, certain things didn't happen. People didn't go to school. Go ahead. Right. Go right. ahead, yes. I, 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 and and, and that, hurt, <laughs> that, hurt, that hurt the generation of behemoths. That's something who was in school at that time. Those two generations, those two cohorts of graduates, Across the country, that hurt them tremendously. Now you see, that, I'm not to cut you off, Anton, but you mm-hmm. see, you see what I was talking about, Howard. When I say uh, uh, people, no matter what, if if your party is in and they no, do something, Brandon, I'm not listen, one of them. you 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 are saying uh, you're saying that people didn't go to school because of pandemic. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you that Minister was unable to. Well, his his Minister of Education was unable to successfully put together a digital platform that was reliable, that was sustainable, that the teachers themselves could understand and reach their students through. In addition I, to that, 
Anton, we had a, Anton we I had, just want to ask a, a question. I want you to ask a question. Let me interject. I know you're talking to the brand, <laughs> but let me uh, just ask this question. In, in all fairness, now we remember yeah. the pushback between Jeffrey Lloyd and Belinda and being able yeah. to talk about uh, the whiteboard and all these things that were happening in the family of Ireland simultaneously. Now, right. if we're going to be very honest, we know that both private and, private and public schools had lost a significant amount of teachers. Uh, the older okay. generation uh, of teachers who didn't understand the technology, a lot of them stepped back. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether or not, I, I just want to be honest with this. I just want to be mm -hmm. honest mm -hmm. with the information and the data that we have right. as, to whether or not, as to whether or not uh, all of this could be levied on the back of uh, leadership at that time or this is decision makes based upon the fact that we're not and, willing to change with and, the times. And, and listening, listening to you, Howard, I, like, like I started out saying, I'm not interested in trying to uh, direct any traffic one way or the other to any of the gentlemen, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not interested in seeking to, 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 to belittle anyone. And, 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 and if I'm seeking to be fair, perhaps the short time frame that was granted led to the, um, um, the, the challenges in passing on the, the um, um, education that was needed to the teachers first and foremost in order to put them in a position to best, to best reach the children. But that was only one of the problems of it. Another of the problems being we had a situation where things became so tough in the country, right? Um, um, the school environment provided a safe place for students to come. It, 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 it provided a wholesome environment for students to come to. It provided electricity. It provided internet access. It provided so many different aspects that was unable to be provided in many of the behemoth homes because of the lack or the suffering. That was also not accounted for, which led to a massive downfall with, 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 the, with the transfer of knowledge at the, at the height of COVID-19. But moving on to the next point, Howard, as it relates to COVID-19 itself, but, but one, of, right one of the now. biggest challenges my lines Hello? are right up. You know, my lines are right yeah, up. So I'll, just I'll, let us be the last one. Okay, I'll yeah. end with this point. Okay. I'll end with this point, Howard. One of the biggest challenges that the minister administration had was he didn't think it was even possible to provide masks and, 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 and sanitizers for the, um, for the behemoth population. He thought it was an impossibility. Therefore, therefore, his, his automatic default position was to shut down the country, kill the economy, not allow anyone to come into the country to conduct business, um, um, cause, cause, for, cause for a setback of an entire generation my, of my. behemoths who have still not recovered to this day. I'll end on that note. Thank you for the opportunity, Howard. God bless. Uh, Thank you, my brother. Uh, let me, may I just please? Just look, I, I'm not going to take long to respond to that. With regards to the educational uh, position that Anton was taking, um, he spoke spoke about a time when the country was going through a pandemic. Uh, presently, this administration has been in government for three years. What improvement, what has happened in relation to education in a time now when there's not a pandemic? Number one. Number two, in terms of not providing the, the um, mask and what have you and not allowing people to come to the country. Well, uh, what was provided was those vaccines, I could tell you that. Um, and that, and, 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 and ads and everything that for people to, to take the vaccine um, and the mass, that, I don't, I don't know where, where, that, where that came from, but that just goes back to what I was saying earlier about if you support a particular party, um, even if they're doing wrong, it's still right in your eyes because of politics, uh, which is not right. You need to look at what is good for the country. I, um, uh, Anton, you're my guy, 100%. And I always give you opportunity to be able to have good conversation. I enjoy that. I always being able to being able to hear a different perspective and different side of this. But um, I don't want to be politically or socially disingenuous when we're putting information to the forefront. I know you know the stats. I know you know the stats as a, as it relates to uh, from an educational standpoint. And I agree with you. There were much more issues as it relates to education because I think uh, Belinda have a hundred and something. Uh, she stayed home and write that, write that, write that, write that, and provided information and letters after letters to the Minister of Education, which I believe sharpened him and really prepared him for the next step, uh, which in turn fortified even this administration to continue to be able to move forward. I won't be decent. I don't want to seem like I pom-pom and, and shaking no pom-pom for nobody. But I just want to say this. 
as it relates to uh, uh, sanitizers and uh, as it relates to masks, as it relates to not being able to go to school and the school being in an environment, it's peculiar because everyone was locked down. It, 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 it's peculiar that you would say it like that because every <clears throat> everyone was locked down. One. And secondarily, all the information that received the uh, competent authority at the time, all the information the competent authority received, they always referenced one aspect, the consultation to the medical practitioners who indicated that we were to capacity and they didn't have the capacity. And the only answer that we had, now we talked about this near and wide, about the fact that they could bring in a next boat, they could bring in all these things, they could bring a floating hospital, they could have done all these things. We talked about that, but the medical persons, Dr. Dow Regis and all those persons, would give them information to indicate that we are at capacity, ensure that you do a lockdown at this time. Come on, man, let's be honest with these things. Let's be fair with these things. I'm not here to shake pom-poms for nobody, but the fact of the matter is that this is information that is accessible to all of us. Let's be real when we're talking about these things. Let me take this quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen, and be right back after this. The foundation. The foundation. Why settle for an ordinary burger when you can indulge in the new farmhouse king at Burger King Nassau? Sink your teeth into two juicy flame-grilled beef patties piled high with crisp bacon, American cheese, crispy onions, a fried egg, and a spicy mayo sauce that adds bold flavor to every bite. Enjoy the new farmhouse king as a combo with fries and a drink, or if you're feeling extra hungry, try the King's Feast, available exclusively at Burger King Nassau. Calling all alive Postmate customers. Paying your Postmate bill in full this month can mean winning tickets to see Janet Jackson live at the Atlantis. Miss Jackson will be nasty. That's right. Make your payment through the My Alive app, BeAlive.com, or any Alive location by April 23rd and be automatically entered. Winner will be announced on April 24th, so don't wait. Start paying for your chance to win. Alive, the perfect connection for everyone. The excitement, the fierce competition, the entertainment. On May 4th and 5th, our Bahamian athletes will compete with hundreds of the best from around the world to secure their spot in the Paris Olympics. God that takes the title. Come witness history as our athletes chase the sun from paradise to Paris at the 2024 World Athletic Relays. May 4th and 5th at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets now at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, sitting here with none other than Bramwell McCartney being able to take all the hard questions to talk about uh, leadership in the country and moving forward. Bramwell, uh, whilst we're here, I see the lines are lit up. I want to talk to you about this. Is there any, and let's just be, I want to hit it quick and get out, right? Is there any sense of revival for you being able to return as leader of the Democratic National Alliance? No. No, I I'm not even sure what's happening with the Democratic National Alliance. That's the second question. Um, What's even happening with the Democratic National Alliance? I I stepped down as leader seven years ago. Um, Chris Mortimer became the interim leader um, for about a year, and then there was a convention, a four-day convention, not a one-day convention, a four-day convention. You all had money. (laughs) No, we ain't had money. (laughs) <laughs> and um, uh, um, Kumalafi, uh, Renthia Kumalafi was voted in mm-hmm. as the leader. Um, and after the election of 2000, what was the last election? 2020, 
Um, I think it was 21. I haven't heard anything from the DNA since. So to answer your question, no. Do you believe that, well, we, we often believe that there is room for a third force in the country. Uh, people text me right now and saying you should align yourself with the coalition, the coalition of independents right now. There's people text me right now and having these kind of a conversation to identify. There is this social desire amongst those persons who have had their fill of um, politics as usual from the FNM and the PLP and looking um, um, in every direction, in any which way, uh, for an alternative, no matter savory or otherwise, they're looking for an alternative to the FNM and the PLP. And they're saying that there's a possibility uh, that they could find true force and strength uh, with a third force. Do you believe that a third force, after everything that you would have gone through, do you believe that the third force has space, not necessarily in the Bahamas in the future, we're talking about right now, do, you, do they have space from a political standpoint to be able to step in and move this country forward the way that we need to? Yes, I think they can, of course. But where that happens is a whole different story. Uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, you know, the, no, the, the ladies and gentlemen, he meant we, we learned that the hard way. <laughs> we, we. I was right there. Yeah. Okay, the mind, please, God. Because of the mindset of the Bahamian people. I mean, you know, <clears throat> at this time, at this stage, for every election cycle, you'll have people saying they are uh, disgruntled uh, with the parties and so on and so forth. Man, I got it. I got it when I uh, was with the DNA and people egging you on to keep moving forward. Ma, we got you back. We got you back. You got you back. And when election time came, I know about this. When election time came, bush crack. They, they, they got. They had a, a completely different color on, and they bit you all day and everything. So I, I think to answer your question, yes, of course. Um, um, what the for for third party and for um, persons, yeah, it, it should be. But the reality is, in my side of the Bayman people. It's PLP or F and M. That's it. Unfortunately, in the sense, unfortunately, in the sense that uh, we should be more open-minded mm -hmm. uh, to embrace uh, otherwise as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But that's the reality of it right now. You know, uh, Miss Ingram uh, said it correctly in the House of Assembly. I think you spoke about it earlier today. Uh, when if I don't get it? When he said, if I don't get it, you'll get it. And he, he was talking to Mr. Christie, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what he meant was if the F and M don't get it, the PLP will get it. Because of the conditioning of the Bahamian people. The mindset of the Bahamian people. Yeah. God, it's hard to change. You did a lot it's in terms change. of being able to step into a space of change, growth and development. You did a lot in terms of innovation and being able to step out first. Uh, in terms of identifying... Uh, leadership of a political organization you left in the hands of a competent and capable woman. Uh, do you believe that the Bahamian people were ready for this kind of a change? Um, f you mean ready for when a woman Arantia or ready for... Ready for a woman in leadership roles? I think so. I think the Bahamian people are ready. I mean, you know, a woman can can lead, and the right woman could lead just as good or even better than the right man. Um, that's my belief. Now, whether the Bahamian people are ready for that is a different story. Mm -hmm. I can't answer that. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if they, they're ready for a woman prime minister. It's heavy what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, not to say that they're right. I, I believe, I believe women, <laughs> most of my businesses are led by women. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> you know, um, you know, like I said, that's not to say women, women can't do it, but whether the voting public would accept that is, I, I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me let me ask. Uh, let me give some numbers. Couple persons are asking me for the numbers. Three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Anywhere from 
anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720, or hit me up, 422-4796. I got a, a lot of texts. I got to read some of these texts. Um, um, I got to read some of these texts because uh, even though we are kind of swimming in the depth of hypothetical and possibilities and all these particular things, people want to know whether or not even on the table, has anything been nudged your way? Have you been promised one thing or another? The social media handles are going crazy. Oh, he's going to be in this capacity or that capacity. Uh, talk to me about those particular things because uh, you've been straightforward with us. Mm -hmm. Let me know whether or not there is even a hypothetical conversation about the commitment and you finding yourself tethered and being able to support uh, Dr. Hubert Alexander Minnis. So the question... I take it as whether or not I've been promised. That's it. That's the. That's literally the text. Whether or not I've been promised. Is he something been promised from, something for minutes if he rejoins and supports his campaign? Absolutely not. I just want to be decent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see me trying to structure yeah. the thing according to no, no, Look, look <laughs> you ask me any question you want. Listen, no Jesus. matter, no matter how. how it is. Have it's, you been promised anything from Minister in the event that you support him, support his campaign, and support his move towards possibly the leader of the Free National Movement and Prime Minister of the country? Absolutely not. I mean, we haven't even had a conversation about any type of move abode regarding his leadership run, if that is the case or otherwise. Not at all. Okay. Let me take a telephone call. Call on the line. Go ahead. Howard. Hey. Good afternoon. What's up, Graham? <laughs> and good afternoon to my friend, Mr. Branville McCartney. How are you? How, uh, Graham, how are you doing? I'm trying to hold it together. You know, I was with you at the DNA when one of our leaders fire sold our phone company. You did a great job in immigration, and um, they didn't treat you. That party did not treat you with the respect I think you deserved as a young person coming up in it. You know, I prayed for God to tell me what to say on this call today. See, Alan said, if you could, you would. And we've had a lot of people that had the chance and they didn't. I think there's only one solution. I mean, everyone's saying you could join the COI and that would be mm, maybe effective. But as you say, if there's only a yellow and red party, there's only one solution for you as a young person. Now becoming a middle-aged person that should step up, <laughs> I would recommend, right. Brian, and, and I'm going to say this with all seriousness, I'd recommend you join the FNM if that's what you feel you should do. And God put it in my heart to tell you, in a three-leg race, 35% wins. And I would want you this September to challenge for the leader of that party. Because I think given the three choices, the good people of Montague have seen the former leader and other people that sat in that cabinet with collective responsibility do some of the things that we felt shouldn't have been done and didn't do some of the things that should have been done. But we have confidence in you, whether it is that party or whatever party and I feel if the DNA had continued, this, this cycle here would have been your time. But it could still be your time. But I feel... Let me hear... Let me, so, so the only determination for any time, because uh, he and I, uh, like I said, I, I've been through this also. People just say, yeah, man, how would I got you? And then I get 12 votes. They need to stop, right? So let's just shoot straight. Well, in the event that he finds himself in the position of the free national movement, and he does what you said in, in terms of being able to give himself forward, uh, for that, finds himself in a position of leadership, will you support Branville McCartney? I've always supported Branville McCartney. If he went and became a PLP leader right now, or a COI leader, or any leader, but I do not want to see him used, as we've done with the majority of young people in this country, Howard, I like and I don't this. want him to do it to you either, where we use you to get the votes, say you're going to get this position, but then... The boss runs the country, and you don't get to do what the people wanted you to do. So wow. you have to be the boss, unfortunately. And the way to do that is to do like David and Goliath and tell all of them that you are coming. And you know what the sad part is? Only MCMs can vote or Stalwart Council members. So if council. I can't vote for the leader of my party, I don't really want to vote for those parties. Wow. 
That's why I ran independent, because well, I will be darned if I'm going to have a couple hundred people decide who's going to be the leader. Well, but you see, if you challenge for leader, Branville, the country's behind you, and they crush you and put one of the other two in, that will go so hard against them. Wow. Waps. This is called chess, Branville. I'm trying to stay calm and show I you. I got to let you go. Why would you try to stay calm? Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, you have a good one, eh? Thank you very much, Graham. Next telephone call. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right. Just stay, Brian. Hey, man. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, I was underneath you. I was, I was, I was underneath you. Um, I was one of the trustees inside the DNA. Uh, so I first started out. Mm -hmm. But um, I respect you. I respect that. You know, you push your heart. See, People just talk, talk, but I, I was on the ground. And what you say, you, you could promise to, uh, you could promise and you could tell the BM people anything. It's up to them when they read, when they, when time they go to vote. You could give them a million dollars. And they still don't see nothing, see you viable. They still go with someone else. You know what I mean? So I understand you come from. And, 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 and the way how you think and the way how you, you feel, that you know that you, you cannot trust these BM people. I was there from, from straight up until you, from you leave up there for the rest. And I know you was on the ground every day. The payment people don't want no change. If they only want to ask them and PLP, but the thing with it, with the people who vote, these people, and it's the one who hurt you. <laughs> the one who's seeing sunshine coming out of oh, their living room. Some of them don't even, some of them get, uh, still have a canvas on their roof, but still have the PLP and ask them in their front room. You understand what I from? These people don't want no change, man. Mm -hmm. And, Fran, if you decide to vote for them, for the FNM, I mean, if you decide to go be, uh, to join the FNM, as much as I, 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 you know, down with you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give, I wouldn't vote for you. Because I wouldn't vote for that, for that, that party, you know why? I used to be a hardcore FNM, uh, supporter too, but I didn't see no changes. You know what I mean? And the day, the time that I was, was, was with FNM, I would go in there and end up joining your old team, and I was, Straight up, that day when I roll over and I see that the future is mistaken, I see that my, my staff, future is mistake, I came out of them. Came out of there and I went to the game. But mm -hmm. for me personally, I think this will be the lowest voting. When that's the action, I don't think a lot of people would be going out. If they don't have alternatives or no other party or something that they can see the sunshine, I don't think a lot of people wouldn't go to the world. It's, it's, well, the I, PLP I told you the sunshine and a new day. You don't think it's a new day? Yeah, but it was you mean you really have to see them liquid sunshine? <laughs> liquid sunshine, <laughs> sir. I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. I like All this. Right. I thank you, man. Thank you so very kindly. Guys, the lines are wide open. I got a couple of texts here. If you give me two seconds, let me see if I can read this. Wow. Politics is a serious thing. Uh, it wasn't the lockdown. The problem was the manner in which it was done. We can't rewrite history as much as some of us try. It's a text that's coming through. So it says, uh, Howard. Let Mr. McCartney, like Mr. McCartney, I too share your thoughts on minutes and wish I did come out to vote, but was scared to catch the virus. Minutes did his best, and the FNM will get my vote if he is returned as leader. There's a text that's coming through. This is crazy, right? Um, um, so it says, don't forget how they are cousins. People text me 8,000 times. <laughs> Let's shoot straight with you. Yeah. This My phone is littered. With the fact that you're supporting your cousin, you're supporting your brother, you're supporting your two sisters, children, so forth and so on. And all of my phones like this. Talk to me about that. Very Chris is my family too. And they say Hubert. And Ingram. you didn't support your and cousin? They say, and they say Hubert Ingram too. <laughs> and Hubert Ingram too. <laughs> the only only prime minister I think who wasn't family to me is Brave Davis. <laughs> My God. Now, but I got to double check that. And your cousin, do you, <laughs> your cousin, do you like that? <laughs> yeah, My that's God. That is. Yeah. Horrible family. Years ago. So but, but how, you know, we look a bit alike. We may be family too. Me and you? <laughs> Only because we light skin. You need to stop. Light, <laughs> light skin, right? <laughs> so it says, Howard, um, are you looking at, uh, are you looking right at the Minis deputy leader? This is the text that's coming through. You, these people have done exactly what you've done. They shoot straight with me today. Good day, mm -hmm. Howard. You have a great guest in studio today, and Bran is a good person. He's on the right track and still rocking with Doc. God is working. This is a text that's coming through. This is good. Uh, good afternoon, McCartney. Uh, the port said that they don't own the government 
They don't owe the government nothing. But I know that Fred Mitchell put the government up to this going after the port. He is a problem in this particular country. Oh, this is heavy stuff. I, I want to be able to take some time out to talk about this, what's going on between the port and what's going on between um, uh, the government. The PLP has come out in the by-election, has taken on a very strong position to make relentless commitments to the people of West Grand Bahama and Bimini to put in Kingsley uh, Smith in mm -hmm. that particular capacity. He's won and the people are still calling me. Y you know I from Eight Maroc. Mm -hmm. You know I from West Grand Bahama, right? Mm -hmm. My family, friends, and other persons who I grew up with are saying to me that there were significant promises that were made and we've not seen the fruit of those promises just yet. Well, not only that, I heard from a lot of people in that area and they said they haven't seen the PLB there yet. Since the election. <laughs> the PLP. My God. Um, but that shouldn't be surprising, eh? Uh, there were a lot of promises made by this government uh, at the last election. And the fruit of those promises have not been uh, developed as yet. I, uh, so why, 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 why are people surprised? Why? It goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, maiming people and their mindset and certain things. Why are you surprised? You know, you know, man, you know how things go. And uh, then say you're surprised when it doesn't happen. That don't make sense to me. It's craziness. I want to know this. Uh, we've said a lot about, I, I think your support more specifically for uh, Dr. Minnis <laughs> and your, your stance and being able to say that you relentlessly support him and you... You're desirous of being able to see him in a position that he could execute some of the plans that he had for the Bahamian people, uh, which I believe were great plans, right? I can be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I, I believe all of us have seen these things, and our disappointment is when they were not enacted. When he started to talk about two terms of the prime minister, when he started to talk about campaign finance reform, when he started to talk about the Freedom of Information Act, the delivery unit, and all these things, there were expectation that he, uh, there was an expectation that he could possibly be the one prime minister after two decades to find himself victorious when it comes again, if he had done these things. Do you believe, talk to me, in the event that he finds himself in leadership again, that he'll execute the things that, the low-hanging fruit that he committed to the Bahamian people to get those things over them. Done. I believe so, and, and, and even more so. You know, there's one thing uh, you didn't mention. You know, he had this uh, program where um, Bahamians, you know, land is wealth, mm -hmm. right? And he had a program uh, that was set up where Bahamians... Uh, would have been able to purchase property on Prospect Ridge without a down payment. Yes, right. That that's building wealth for people, right? No matter who you are, that's building wealth. Uh, no, to answer your question, I think um, uh, and that's why I say I think he needs an opportunity to to, gov to, to govern again to carry out what has been started. That did not get started, and to build on and go even further uh, for the betterment of the country. I want, in these last two minutes, I want to ask you uh, the synopsis of, our, of your political life. I want to ask you what, are, what can we expect to see from you, rather, um, over the course of the next, because there has, there's been significant chatter about the possibility of us going to an early election. And in the event that we do, what is the expectation that we will see Branville McCartney participating, not necessarily from a formal standpoint and frontline politics, but participating in more and more social discussions and conversation about being able to lead the country in a particular uh, direction. Uh, what can we expect to see from you uh, leading up to the next general election? Well, I think, you know, you know over the past few years, I, I've, I've always been there in terms of talking uh, when necessary or... Uh, when asked to, to, to speak, uh, nothing has changed there, and my talk has been constant and consistent throughout. Um, moving moving forward, uh, I don't think anything would change in that regard. Mm -hmm. The only reason I'm on your show today is because I go on Long Island, man. And I was. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm talking to take a photo, I, I, right? And I'm glad question. they take it when I was eating that stew fresh, boy, because like I had all on my mouth. <laughs> I, that I, was I, I'm good. <laughs> I, I can't ask you this, right? You had no money. You had no money. My no, boy, you had no money. Like yeah, I I want it. I want it. We didn't have time, but I wanted to take some mutton home, you know. <laughs> now listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. Do you have any family or any connections in Long Island? I got to ask these questions. This, cause this, this is a heavy question because Long Island people, they go with familiarity. And then they're effing it. Talk to me about that. Uh, not significantly. There are some McCartney's and stuff from Long Island. But you look like them. them. Man, you look like them too. You need to stop. You look like them too. You need to stop. You know, <laughs> we, 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 we red boys. Minister, you're inviting me on the plane. We, we red boys, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, was not, not again, I was talking to some of the Long Islands. I said, man, you know, you're talking about red boys. I said, you want to see, you want to see red? Nine o'clock in the morning, Long Island, some of them fellas walking the road after a, few co- after a few cocktails. Wow. <laughs> I never been to Long Island, gotta go. Brian, but I want to thank you, man. I really, really enjoy this conversation. I believe that you are very frank and open. You know that that seat is always available to you. Whenever well, you, you want to talk, whenever you want to talk about leadership in the country and the course that it's taking, I want to let you know that we're here to be able to have frank and honest discussion. Not necessarily... Uh, you know, leaning in one direction of a political standpoint or another, uh, but being able to shoot straight down the bow and say this is needed for the growth and development of the country. I thank you, my brother. Well, thank you, and keep up the good work, man. Keep thank on you. talking the talk. Well, I'm ready to walk the walk. <laughs> if you All join right. the, the DNA, let me know. <laughs> I just got to be decent. I just got to <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the show today. I want to thank you so kindly for being able to join in with us and participate. I know that there are many texts that I did. I had almost 100 texts. There are many texts I didn't get. There are calls that we didn't wasn't able to get to, but we did our absolute best to engage Branville. We opened the, the discussion to him, opened the seat to him, and hopefully we could see him back here to have further conversation. It is 2 o'clock. I thank you for being able to join us. Tomorrow we're going to get into deeper conversation as it relates to what's going on with uh, Port Authority. I'm going to have some good persons in the, in the studio with us. Uh, have a beautiful day, guys. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. God spare. <laughs> The Foundation of Heart Grants is brought to you by Alive, Bonfa Bones, Burger King.